Martin County. The accident happened near the intersection of Northeast Jensen Beach Boulevard and Northeast Pineapple Avenue. Good evening. I'm Felicia Rodriguez. I'm Todd McDermott. Thank you for joining us tonight. Ari Height joins us live from the scene. Ari, we understand the intersection just reopened. Just reopened about 20 minutes ago. That's when the train finally was able to pull away after being here for about three hours plus. Let me step out of the shot so you can see. There is still uh, firefighters here on scene right now. What they are doing, they're just wrapping everything up, cleaning it right now. Let me go ahead now and show you some video from earlier. Lost the, uh, we've lost the audio portion of Ari's report. We'll try to get more information for you before the end of the newscast, see if we can get Ari back. A former city employee is in jail right now for allegedly threatening to blow up a local water treatment plant and setting his own car on fire. Tonight we uncovered Douglas Ellington's past employment records. We've obtained exclusive video of a prior and very recent arrest. It was a terrifying morning for a lot of people at the sewage plant in West Palm Beach. A man drove his truck through the gate, got out, doused it in gasoline, and set it on fire. Investigators say he then threatened to blow up the sewage plant. At one point, told someone on the scene that, that there was some sort of an explosive device, some sort of a bomb, either in his car or on a nearby, uh, nearby truck. And police say he also threatened violence at the water treatment plant in Riviera Beach. They just said it was a bomb threat and we needed to evacuate the building. In both cases, the explosives turned out to be a hoax. And police say this is the man responsible, Douglas Ellington. He used to work at both plants and was fired from both jobs. West Palm in 2011, Riviera Beach earlier this month. He was arrested today and we've learned it's not the first time he's been in handcuffs. Yes, This is exclusive video obtained by WPBF 25 News of Ellington at a West Palm Beach City Council meeting February 1st. Ellington spoke during public comment about what he oh, feels are safety me. concerns at the sewage plant, but then he refused to leave. Police officers eventually answer. escorted Ellington out of the meeting and arrested him. And this has happened before. This is him last August, pushing past a security guard at the West Palm Beach City building, eventually escorted out by police. At the time, he told us he only wanted to talk to the city manager. I've never been escorted anywhere on the property. Um, they know that I'm a very peaceful person. We've also gotten a look at his personnel files from both jobs. They document ongoing problems with management and coworkers. Both files are full of violations, suspensions, and eventually termination. Neighbors watched Monday as police spent much of the day at Ellington's home. I just strongly believe that he got pushed to the limit. But he's a, he's a, he's a great guy. He's a great neighbor. No bond has been set at this time for Douglas Ellington. Mike? All right, Todd, let's talk weather. Beautiful night across South Florida, clear skies, and for a change, nice and warm as we just about ready to switch the calendar into March, the beginning of a nice warming trend here in South Florida. Right now, temperatures ranging from as warm as 70 in Boca, a little cooler along the Treasure Coast, mid-50s in Port St. Lucie, and around Lake Okeechobee, temperatures also in the 50s. But overnight, especially here in Palm Beach County, temperatures not dropping much will be pretty comfortable with those readings at the mid-range of the 60s. But will we also be a little wet? Our first alert Doppler radar tracking a couple of showers here in the ocean, kind of making tracks toward parts of Palm Beach County. And our computer model suggests that we may see a quick shower early tomorrow morning as you head off to work at school. But that's it. Stray shower at best. After that, we crank up the heat in what will be a warm week in South Florida. We'll talk more about that. We'll back with your full forecast in a couple minutes. A suspected carjacker who led Riviera Beach police on a high-speed chase will stay in jail. Today, a judge denied bond for Johnny Francis. Investigators say Francis and a group of armed men carjacked two women at an apartment complex in Boca Raton earlier this month. One week later, police officers spotted the stolen car and tried to pull over the driver. They say Francis refused to stop. Francis blew through a red line at the intersection of Military Trail and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, crashing into two cars. Five people were hurt. Francis was released from prison in November after serving 18 months for armed robbery. A judge today denied bond for the woman arrested in Fort Pierce over the weekend after she allegedly kidnapped a two-month-old relative in Fort Lauderdale. This is video showing the moments Taraji Kemp 
was reunited with her mother. Police say the mother's cousin, Stephanie Augustine, and a 14-year-old boy are charged in this case. The judge ordered Augustine to undergo a mental health evaluation at the request of her sister. Police in Port St. Lucie are trying to find the man caught on surveillance video breaking into a local hospice thrift store. The video shows the suspect smashing the window at the Treasure Coast Hospice Thrift Boutique, then searching the cash register, and when he doesn't find any money, he leaves. Police say the crook also broke the front glass door of a nail salon just two doors down in that very same plaza. I came in this morning and somehow like, the whole front uh, door is like broken and I believe that they do go inside and check this, uh, the closet. They might try to find some cash. I guess they don't find nothing in there and they left. Police also found markings where the suspect tried to break into a restaurant but could not. A dispute over the one-time secret bunker on Peanut Island built to protect President John F. Kennedy is putting the future of what is now a tourist attraction in jeopardy. County Code Enforcement says there are several safety violations in that bunker, which is part of the Palm Beach Maritime Museum. But owner Anthony Miller says his property is safe. Miller also claims the county and Board of Port Commissioners have been trying to move the museum off the man-made island, sitting in the intercoastal near the Lake Worth Inlet. The Board of Port Commissioners will now decide whether they'll have to temporarily close that bunker. West Palm Beach City Commissioners voted to give Mayor Jerry Moyo and themselves a pay raise tonight. The City Commission voted to boost the mayor's salary to $150,000 while raising their own pay to $35,000. That's a $5,000 increase for each of them. Tomorrow, county leaders will vote on whether to extend an agreement with Uber. Six months ago, the Palm Beach County Board of Commissioners voted in favor of a temporary operating agreement with the company. Now that agreement is about to expire. If the agreement is extended, Uber will continue to operate past March 31st. Coming up next, a Secret Service takedown. Why a Time Magazine photographer was body slammed to the floor at a Donald Trump rally. Plus, smoothing out cellulite, the new treatment that takes those dimples away. And it is the end of an era in space. The longest serving resident of the International Space Station is handing over the keys and getting ready to finally come home. Mike? And Todd, weather-wise, it's all good across South Ford and now ditto for tomorrow. But as we head toward Wednesday, the first of two cold fronts will come our way. And that first front now moving through Oklahoma, producing severe weather. We'll talk about those two fronts. Have a warm week forecast when we're back in a couple minutes. Jail, it's where criminals go to pay for their crimes, but you're stuck paying for their health care. You have a major pregnant. We do. Inmates who have cancer. We do. Inmates and dialysis and mental issues as well. Oh, extremely. Yeah. Wednesday, WPBF 25 News investigates with exclusive access. The taxpayers pay for that. From treatments for stage four cancer to high blood pressure. See how cunning criminals are abusing an already strained system and how much it's costing you. Wednesday on WPBF 25 News at 11. This is my office. As a scientist for U.S. Sugar, I use the latest environmental technology to protect the water and the land. The good news is we're making progress. At U.S. Sugar, we're meeting America's most stringent water quality standards on our farms and preserving the soil by rotating our crops with vegetables and sweet corn. Because this isn't just where we work, it's where we live. U.S. Sugar, farming, naturally car accident? People are talking about Steinger is going green. They sure are. Get this. After Marita's accident, they got her $94,000. I like the sound of that. Then you'll love this. They got Eric $392,000 after his accident. Check this out. Steinger is going green got Rod $900,000. $900,000? Talk about getting paid. If you've been injured in a car accident, find out why people are talking about Steinger is going green. 800-561-1111. Councilwoman Ann Gerwig is conflicted. Gerwig's family business made $1.4 million from Palm Beach taxpayers. As a result, Gerwig did not vote 22 times due to personal conflicts. 22 times she failed us because of her conflicts of interest. No show Ann Gerwig putting profits over public service. Mayor Bob Margolis puts Wellington first. Margolis protecting our village from overdevelopment, maintaining our quality of life. Mayor Margolis, Wellington first. This is what precision looks like, helping you see what's hard to see, thanks to Terrain Denali's Side Blind Zone Alert that uses radar to watch your blind spots. So it's true. 
Mom does have eyes in the back of her head. The new, meticulously crafted 2016 Terrain Denali from GMC. This is the precision of professional grade. Or current lessees switch to GMC and get this low mileage lease on this Terrain SLE1 for around $199 per month. GMC, we are professional grade. We're going back now to our live local late breaking news. That fatal train accident in Jensen Beach, right on Jensen Beach Boulevard. A man hit by a train. He did not make it. Ari Heights there. Ari? Well, within the last 10 minutes or so, this scene, as you can see, has entirely cleared now right on these tracks behind me. This is where that man was killed earlier this evening. Let me go ahead now and show you some video from earlier this evening. This is about three and a half hours ago or so, 7.30 this evening. That's when this happened. The Martin County Sheriff's Office tells me right now they don't have a whole lot of information. What they know is the man was on the tracks as the train came past. He was hit and he was killed, but that's all they're saying right now. They have not released that man's identity yet. Uh, the intersection here was closed for approximately three hours or so. It opened a little bit after 10:30 or so, and now traffic is moving uh, flow, uh, excuse me, flowing smoothly. And you might be able to hear in the background, we've got a train coming through now as well. So the trains are moving again as well. Everything here is now back to normal. That is very latest reporting live in Jensen Beach. Ari Height, WPDF 25 News. Tonight in our commitment 2016 coverage, we are just hours away from the start of Super Tuesday. Tomorrow's primaries and caucuses will shape the remainder of the presidential election. And candidates from both parties crisscross the country today to rally voters in a dozen states. Tonight, just hours before Super Tuesday voting begins, last minute rallies and tension. Protesters interrupting a Donald Trump event chanting Black Lives Matter. Get him out of here, please. And as they left, a photographer thrown to the ground by a Secret Service agent. Trump making no mention of that or of the controversy sparked by these comments on CNN about his endorsement from former Ku Klux Klan Grand Wizard David Duke. Would you just say unequivocally you condemn them and you don't want their support? Well, I have to look at the group. I mean, I don't know what group you're talking about. Trump later explained he didn't hear the question, noting he has disavowed Duke, but it isn't stopping the attacks from his opponents. I don't care how bad the earpiece is, Ku Klux Klan comes through pretty clearly, and he refuses to criticize it. We should all be united in saying that the Klan is reprehensible. Uh, and, 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 and has no place in politics. The latest national poll shows Trump supported by 49% of GOP voters going into Super Tuesday, the biggest day of the campaign so far, with voting in 12 states and more than 1,600 delegates at stake. Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton hoping to solidify her lead tomorrow, already looking beyond Bernie Sanders, now targeting Trump. I don't think America has ever stopped being great. What we need to do now is make America whole. Now, Trump is polling behind here in Texas, where Senator Ted Cruz is counting on his constituents to bring him a much-needed win. In Austin, Texas, Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News. Our thanks to Marcy. Three of the top candidates will hold their watch parties tomorrow night right here in Florida two weeks before the all-important primary here. Donald Trump will be at his Mar-a-Lago estate on Palm Beach tomorrow night. He's expected to make an appearance at 9 p.m. Senator Marco Rubio will watch the results tomorrow night in Miami. He will be at the Ronald Reagan Equestrian Center at Tropical Park. And Hillary Clinton will also be spending her Super Tuesday night in Miami. She will make a public appearance at the Ice Palace Film Studio near American Airlines Arena. All of our crews live at all three locations tomorrow night will be breaking in throughout the evening for live reaction from the candidates. I'll be with the Clinton campaign. Be sure to keep it right here on WPBF 25 News, your commitment, 2016 headquarters. All new tonight, Apple scored a big win in the New York court today as it continues to fight the FBI's court order in California. A federal judge ruled investigators cannot force Apple to unlock an iPhone owned by a convicted drug dealer. The government requested Apple break the phone's security code without wiping out the data so it could access the contact information of other suspected drug dealers. But the judge in this case ruled the government can't force Apple to assist in the federal government's investigation against the company's will. Apple currently being pressured by federal investigators to break into 13 iPhones across the country, including the iPhone that belonged to one of the San Bernardino shooters. 
A U.S. bank is now being questioned in the FIFA corruption scandal that rocked the sports world. Citigroup said in a recent securities filing, it's been slapped with a subpoena from U.S. officials investigating bribery, corruption, and money laundering. Anti-money laundering laws require banks to alert authorities about shady transactions like the ones at the heart of the FIFA scandal. Authorities say last year, senior, senior FIFA officials used various U.S. banks to transfer and receive $150 million in bribes and kickbacks. Authorities are now questioning whether Citigroup turned a blind eye to suspicious transactions. Right now, four students are recovering after a shooting at a high school in Ohio. Witnesses say somebody opened fire inside Madison High at south of Cleveland. A 14-year-old student was taken into custody. Authorities say they have no idea right now what motivated the attack. They're not releasing that information well, at this time. Oscar-winning character actor George Kennedy has passed away. He won a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his role as the convict dragline in Cool Hand Luke. He was a staple in the 1970s disaster film Earthquake and appeared in the airport movies. He even brought the laughs as a police detective in the Naked Gun trilogy. In all, Kennedy appeared in more than 180 movies and TV shows in a career spanning almost 60 years. Kennedy had multiple health issues. He was 91 years old. SpaceX is getting ready to make its fourth try to launch that rocket from Cape Canaveral. Liftoff scheduled for tomorrow evening at 6.35, 11 minutes earlier from the three prior attempts, as if that might make a difference. Third attempt to send the rocket into space was scrubbed just last night. That rocket will carry a satellite eventually that will bring internet and phone access to millions of people in Asia. U.S. astronaut Scott Kelly is getting ready to come home after nearly a year in space. Certainly got the record. Kelly and another <laughs> Russian cosmonaut served as test subjects on the International Space Station. So scientists could study the effects of space travel on a human body. Part of NASA's goal to make sure astronauts can handle a trip eventually to Mars. Kelly will return to Texas on Wednesday. He did have a lot of fun on the board. <laughs> now spent the most cumulative time in space of any American in history. Do we have any of the gorilla suit videos? <laughs> that was that funny. was a true highlight. <laughs> and he did some work up there too, yes, I'm guessing, did. right? Besides having a lot of fun. Can you imagine a year in space and how excited he must be to come home? I bet. Yeah, put, put feet on terra firma for exactly. a change. Exactly, right? that'd be Gravity. floating around all the time. <laughs> Some good weather in Florida would be good for him. Uh, Florida weather will be great for the next couple of days, despite the fact we've got two cold fronts coming our way, fronts that will have very little impact on the weather, except kind of shift our winds a little bit. Let's begin with a look at the satellite view tonight, and boy, it's good. Skies are clear. If you've been outside tonight, it is really pretty with the clear skies, just a few clouds offshore, and a couple of sprinkles. And as I showed you earlier in the broadcast, maybe one or two of those sprinkles will move on shore tomorrow morning. Otherwise, tomorrow, much better than today in terms of sunshine. Lots of gray skies this morning. Sunshine this afternoon, that bumped up our high temperature to 7. 76 degrees. I think tomorrow we'll see sunshine after a couple clouds early in the morning, just about all day. Right now, temperatures are looking good. 50s, 60s. How about Boca? That's the warmest we've been at 11 o'clock in quite some time. Current temperature there is 70 degrees. Overnight, dropping just a bit here in Palm Beach County into the low 60s, 50s for the Treasure Coast and mid 50s for Lake Okeechobee. And then tomorrow, Tomorrow, the beginning of a nice warming trend. If you like temperatures in the 80s, and who doesn't, it's going to be just about perfect tomorrow. Delray 82, Palm Beach Gardens 80, more 80s over inland areas as well. High temperatures along the Treasure Coast in the upper range of the 70s. Having said that, we may start the day with a quick shower. Here's our first alert future track. 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Notice the little green blob. One or two will move on shore. That'll be it as we head towards, say, noontime. Mostly sunny skies. Sunshine continues all day tomorrow. So tomorrow, warm and dry with the possibility of a shower early in the morning. Then as we continue through the week, got a cool front on Wednesday. Very weak. What's it going to do? As I said, just shift the winds from the east to the west. Another weak front on Friday. That's going to give us a perfect weekend with dry and mild conditions. In fact, look at the high temperatures for the rest of the week. This looks good, right? Upper 70s on Tuesday, 80s all the way through Saturday.
First alert forecast coming up. Here we go. Partly cloudy, mild, overnight lows in the 60s. High temperatures tomorrow, 80 degrees in many spots under mostly sunny skies. Boating forecast improving here as well. Seas just two to three feet. Inland waters light chop. And your first alert seven day forecast, other than a stray shower, warm and dry all the way through next week. All right, Mike, thank you. All new tonight, Governor Rick Scott now requesting that President Barack Obama issue an emergency declaration for parts of the Panhandle after the EF3 tornado swept through Escambia and Santa Rosa counties. That emergency order would provide federal aid to help people in that area. Cellulite, the lumps that just won't go away. And let's face it, sometimes the gym just doesn't get rid of it. Now there's a new minimally invasive treatment promising results. Summer is all year round in Florida. The revealing bikinis, short shorts, and mini skirts are always in style. Living in South Florida with all the cellulite, I was uncomfortable with wearing shorts. Hi, Ashley. Good Ashley morning. Blazer couldn't stand to look at her cellulite for one more day. Exercise and lotions, nothing ever works. I don't know one woman that says I can live with my cellulite. Janet Allenby is one of the local doctors doing a new procedure targeting cellulite. Probably about 80% of the women have cellulite, and it's no fault of their own. They can be thin they can be fat, they have cellulite. Allenby says the treatment is supposed to last for up to two years. We've been looking for the holy grail for cellulite treatment, and this is what we have been presented with. It's like a little type of vacuum device that allows us to pop the skin up, get those little tethering bands that are pulled the skin down, and it just pops those little bands so the tissue releases and the dimple goes away. After the procedure, I had no downtime really. I'm up walking around, working, and very minimal pain. And these are the results, something Ashley is excited to see. So now the big question, how much does it cost? We're told the treatment starts at $2,500. Today is Medical Alert Day here at WPBF 25. We're focusing on heart health. More than 610,000 people die of heart disease in this country every year. That's one in four deaths in this country. We talked with Dr. Oz about the problem here in the U.S. He says it's partly due to weight gain, obesity in America. But he says the beauty of the heart is that damage is reversible to some extent. He says getting healthy is a great start. He encourages people to eat heart healthy foods, including healthy fats, fish oils, omega threes, olive oils and avocados. He says what you eat has a direct effect on your heart health. Uh, fundamentally, heart disease, as well as, as a stroke, is, is a disease of inflammation. And the less irritating foods you put in your body, starting with fats, the better off you are. Some other heart healthy foods, whole grains, fruits and veggies, experts say all that though, but also control your portion size. Maytag Dairy Farms in Iowa is expanding a recall because of a possible listeria contamination. The recall applies to Maytag blue cheese wedges, wheels and crumbles. The products were first recalled two weeks ago. Symptoms of listeria can take weeks to show up. The recall product was sold through distributors, wholesalers, retail stores, restaurants and even direct mail orders nationwide from November 24 through February 11th. Up next, bathing in beer, the first ever beer spa that's now open in the U.S. That story is next, but first, here's Jimmy Kimmel. That's a waste. Look at what we did tonight just to make you proud. Can I get a, is, is Kimmel oh, kiss? What's that? Oh, like that? Yeah. Oh my God, you're so cute. Thank you're you. so cute. Oh, thank you. You're so beautiful. Thank you very much. First Alert Weather is sponsored by Jupiter Tequesta Air Conditioning and Heating. A new car isn't just a purchase, it's an event. No one understands that better than Schumacher. 18 car lines, luxury, muscle, everything in between. An astounding pre-owned and certified used inventory. Customer service aimed at making you feel like family. With our new stores in Del Rey, Schumacher now has 18 car lines to serve South Florida. Schumacher, West Palm, North Palm, and now Del Rey Beach. Know you can keep your financial big picture under control. Know you can see how much you have to spend and whether you should transfer funds. Know you can easily keep track of what you're putting away. 
know you're budgeted for the great escape. Thanks to Virtual Wallet by PNC. Marco Rubio is a recognized foreign policy expert. And Donald Trump? He praises Putin. Doesn't know what our nuclear weapons triad is. Says he'd be neutral between Israel and its enemies. Trump claims he knows about China because there's a Chinese bank in one of his buildings. In today's world, we can't have a president who knows nothing about foreign policy. Conservative Solutions Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. I gotta say, this old mattress still looks pretty good to me. <coughs> it's a little dusty. Well, it's not just us, sir. Really? Those are millions of dust mites. Dust mites? Yeah, plus dead skin and dried sweat. But I've only had this mattress for... 12 years. Guess you can't judge a mattress by its... Slush, pillow top cover? Right. Check your mattress tag. If it's over eight, it's time to replace. Mattress Firm. Save money, sleep happy. Yes, we're just moving east at 40 miles per hour, so let's patrol the line and be ready to switch. But, uh, we have personnel en route. When you live and work here, reliability is more than just a job. It's what drives us. At FPL, we keep our eye on the big picture to be ready for you in good weather and bad. Because while outside, it may sound like the sky is falling. Inside your home, it's our job to make sure that for you, it's just another Saturday night. See how at FPL.com. For the very first time, an active duty member of the U.S. Navy received the Medal of Honor. Senior Chief Special Warfare Operator Edward Byers Jr. is a member of the Navy's famed SEAL Team 6. In 2012, he took part in a daring raid that rescued an American hostage in Afghanistan. Byers used his body as a shield to protect the hostage from gunfire while simultaneously fighting another Taliban fighter. My entire military career and my entire life, I've lived a very quiet and uh, discreet life. So with this award is not something I asked for. It's something that a group of people put me in for and thought that my actions that day were deserving of this award. So with that comes some uh, obligations. Byers is the sixth seal to get the Medal of Honor. New to love and surprise leap day proposal. Yes, marriage proposal <laughs> at the Palm Beach Zoo. Animal keeper Emily Maple decided to propose to her boyfriend, Rob B.J. Lesko, of eight years. <laughs> Look at his face. He's what? not sure what's going on. He said yes. Her mom also proposed to her dad what? on Leap Day, and they have been married 43 years. So it's a good sign. Aww. And, and the sloth will uh, actually not be at the service. <laughs> we also want to wish a very happy second birthday to these twin boys, one of our loyal WPBF 25 News viewers. Riker and Dylan Renga were born on Leap Day in 2008, so they're really eight years old today. Happy birthday, boys. Oh, they're so cute. And here's a look at tonight's winning lottery numbers. You're watching WPBF 25 News. and boating forecast sponsored by McDonald's. I'm loving it. The Fat Cat Wellington Insiders have picked their man, Mike Drehaus. On the planning board, Drehaus voted to protect developers from code violations and in favor of massive development inside the equestrian preserve. Drehaus means more traffic, more development, more control for developers. That's why the Fat Cat developers are backing Drehaus. Remember, Drehaus sold us out to the Fat Cat developers and he can't be trusted. The flu virus, it's a really big deal. And with fever, aches, and chills, mom knows it needs a big solution, an antiviral. Don't kid around with the flu. Call your doctor within the first 48 hours of symptoms and ask about prescription Tamiflu. Attack the flu virus at its source with Tamiflu, an antiviral that helps stop it from spreading in the body. Tamiflu in liquid form is FDA approved to treat the flu in people two weeks of age and older whose flu symptoms started within the last two days. 
Before taking Tamiflu, tell your doctor if you're pregnant, nursing, have serious health conditions, or take other medicines. If you develop an allergic reaction, a severe rash, or signs of unusual behavior, stop taking Tamiflu and call your doctor immediately. Children and adolescents in particular may be at an increased risk of seizures, confusion, or abnormal behavior. The most common side effects are mild to moderate nausea and vomiting. <laughs> Anti-flu? Go antiviral with Tamiflu. Feels like home. home.